Hello and welcome. Well, what are we talking about today? Judicial brouhaha, or can we say, you know, uh, judicial confusion? I'm sure this is about part three. I told you earlier that this story would have twists and turns. On a, some of us had concerns that maybe we had rushed too much. Uh, there were so many school of thoughts. But what has happened? Well, uh, the uh, vice president acting in, st in the position as the president has. Uh, uh, suspended some of the judges who you know, are allegedly you know being implicated in a nurse's video we're going to find out why it is that there were 22 and some are not uh, implicated some are implicated some have been uh, left off the hook due to ill health what's actually going on so let's just, just find what has happened as of now and then we look forward some judges who sit in certain courts will not be there anymore. So what then happens when the uh, court reviews in full? And there's so many questions. So I have uh, someone who has all the answers in the studio to help us. And then later on in the show, uh, senior Michael Quay would also join us and add his legal wisdom to what's going on. But let me uh, say welcome and thank you to uh, Loa lawyer Yao Opong. Uh, brother, you're welcome. I'm grateful, Nana. How are you doing? Very well, very well, very well. And uh, I'm not sure many people are as confused as I am. So we just want to break mm. it down from this almighty article 146, yeah. uh, which says that if you find something wrong with the justice of a high court, you petition the president. Yes. Now, has the president got the discretion to say, well, I don't think this petition is worthwhile, take it away, or by all means, he has to forward you on? Well, thank you very much. And um, as regards to your cherished viewers, mm. Lord, um, but before we move on, if you may permit me, I would like to give a background to this whole article 146 in sure. particular. Mm. You, if you, you recollect, um, years ago, uh, President who was deemed to be the appointing authority of judges, special superior court judges being high court, court of appeal and supreme, supreme court justices, had also the power to dismiss them uh, at will, if you like. And so one will recollect um, the... Let, let, me, let, me, let me just take a quick break. There's a technical hitch. We correct it, and then we're coming straight back. So don't move. Well, thank you very much for staying and uh, we're looking at the judicial brouhaha and trying to get an understanding of what's going on because sometimes it just gets too much as to what is happening and what is going on and I'm hoping that by the end of the show we'll all be up to date as to what exactly is happening because the understanding of this case is very important. We don't want to lose hope in the judiciary and that's what we're trying to do here trying to get an understanding of what's going on. Are you trying to give us a background of the uh, Article 146? Okay. Yes, Article 146 is um, this substantially with the removal of Superior Court Justices. And the Superior Court Justices are the Justices or Judges of the High Court, mm -hmm. Court of Appeal, and the Supreme Court. I think those who are familiar with the court system mm -hmm. will, will know that um, in the High Court, there is a one judge, usually of 10 years at the bar, first of all means that he must be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So about 10 years at the bar, 10 years as a lawyer. Then court of appeal, you get three people usually mm -hmm. who must be about 15 years or more at the bar. And then also the Supreme Court, you be lawyers who are about 20 years and more as Supreme Court judges. And it's quite rigid. It, yes, it is. And so, at the High Court, you will find that if you are not satisfied with the decision of one person, then you move up to the Court of Appeal. We call them three wise men. Mm -hmm. They are women to go anyway. Mm -hmm. And, and you, if you still are dissatisfied, depending on the nature of your case, mm -hmm. you go to the Supreme Court, you can get five people, sometimes seven, eleven, and so on, or nine, sitting mm -hmm. on the case, depending on the nature of the case. So the point is that then um, you want me to ask, so can they be removed? Recognizing that judges are human, and they are also subject to human frailty and all the ills 
that we are unfortunately associated with by the fact that we are humans, we have as, uh, provided or outlined a legal framework which is quite as expansive and quite elaborate for the removal of especially superior court judges. And it has a background to it. As I was saying, years ago, especially the first uh, republic, because we had just embarked on the establishment of a nation state, there was the need to strengthen things. There was the need to make the president or the executive or the prime minister very strong. And so he appointed the judges and he could also remove them or dismiss them. So an example was uh, Seako Kosa, who obviously um, had a disagreement with President Kuma, for example, at the time, and the stories that um, he had, he removed him, and that was it. And since then, there had been such instances, glimpses of um, executive not really appreciating the work of the judiciary, mm -hmm. or as we put it, this, the embodiment of the, um, the executive powers, very strong, and so may not necessarily like what judges do. So we, in this constitution, all the people of Ghana decided that never again shall we leave the removal of a superior court judge in the hands of one person. So when you look at the procedure, which we, we now understand or agree that it is as important as substantive law, for example, substantive law like trespass, somebody <coughs> moved from his boundary to yours. But then the procedure for bringing that person to court and to ensure that the court in, uh, in our villages will child damage, I mean, mm -hmm. will grant you damages, compensation, or even we will recover your land from the person. That is also as important as the factor of um, trespass itself. Mm -hmm. So in Article 146, first of all, it states clearly plus one, that the justice of superior court, I will leave the chairman of tribunal because we don't have them, shall not be removed from office. One, then exception, except for stated misbehavior or incompetence or on ground of inability to perform the functions of his office arising from infirmity of body or mind. So stated misbehavior, mm -hmm. incompetence, I think the two are clear. The third one is that he is unable to perform the functions for which he was appointed a superior court judge because one of infirmity of the body, weakness, that he's unable to even move or mm -hmm. obviously unable to perform the function, mm -hmm. or infirmity of the mind. I think yeah. if we stretch it, we know what that yeah. will mean. On these grounds, a person may then take steps, all the people of Ghana, because under the Constitution, Article 125, justice emanates from the people. Yeah. But all the people cannot administer justice. And so they have vested that right to administer justice in the hands of people who are called judges or justices, magistrates, and so on. So the peop any, person in, any person in Ghana may then, with, who thinks that the conduct of a judge under any of these three or four categories of um, circumstances under which he can be removed, will then have to take the process. The first step is to give a petition to the president. In the petition, you must then state under which of these stated grounds you want the judge to be removed. When the president receives it, he doesn't have to do anything about it at all. All that he's got to do is to forward it to the chief justice. Now, when you read further, when the chief justice also receives this petition from the president, she also has a duty to perform. The establishment of the most popular word, maybe two word, combined words, prima facie case. <laughs> now, the prima facie case only means prima facie just on the face of it. Mm -hmm. Just by looking at the petition, do you think that any useful purpose will be served by first of all establishing a committee or causing a committee to be established 
to investigate it. And two, giving opportunity to these person or persons who have been named against whom the complaint is made to answer. Will it not be a total waste of time, resources, and energy? But if there is a question to answer, it does not also mean that the person is liable or guilty mm -hmm. of the complaint. But you just want to see whether those questions can be answered and whether it is necessary to establish a committee. So once the Chief Justice decides that there is a prima facie case for the person to answer, then, the, then another procedure, and it's very important that we look at these things. Mm -hmm. The committee has to be established. The Chief Justice does not appoint the first three people. It is the Judicial Council that appoints three persons. They must all be justices of the Superior Court, High Court, Court of Appeal, Supreme Court. Then another two, so the committee must be committee of five. Mm -hmm. The other two persons are appointed by the Chief Justice on the advice of the Council of State. And these persons, we are told, they, they must not be lawyers, they must not be members of the Council of State, and they must not, they must not be members of Parliament. So we will say, quote and unquote, ordinary persons, non-legal persons, who must. And it's also because the Council of State is the one going to advise the Chief Justice to appoint the people so their own members should not qualify. Okay. You see the wisdom? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so the Chief Justice can only appoint two people upon the advice of Council of State. Okay. And the Judicial Council, of mm -hmm. course, she usually chairs the Judicial mm -hmm. Council anyway, but you, you see that we have tried in our own way, in our own wisdom, to ensure that the removal of just judges is not left in the hand of one person. Mm -hmm. Now, when the prima facie case is established and the committee is set up in accordance with law, mm -hmm. then the chief justice will have to then refer to the president. The president must be informed of this process. And when you read down, it says, where a petition has been referred to a committee under this article, the president may, in the case of any justice of the superior court, acting in, advance, uh, in accordance with the Judicial Council, suspend that justice. What it means is that if the committee is set up and the president believes that the justice who is the subject of investigation should be suspended, then he will be suspended according to the President and in a, in a, uh, upon the advice of the, council, the Judicial Council. Yes. And that is where we are now. First, a recent example is Madame Loretta Lampis. So, hold on. What, what, once you establish that there's a prima <coughs> facie case, uh, you then what, tell the person that, look, I think you need to come and answer the questions. Yes, so you, the, the, the law states clearly that. Um, the, where the Chief Justice decides that there is a prima facie case and there is that appointment, then the named justices will be given the opportunity to appear before the committee, either by themselves or together with their lawyers. Of course, some will say even other experts. Mm -hmm. Of course, if it's about maybe embezzlement and you think that an accountant can assist you, I think that you'll be afforded the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you'll be given the opportunity to be heard in a fair trial okay. or a fair hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then when the president exercises that uh, discretion, then you'll be asked to, you'll be suspended. What we have to realize is that, um, or recognize is where the appointment of justices is by what we call a warrant of appointment. Mm -hmm. It's a document that is duly executed a very, at a very solemn ceremony and handed over to you. You are to perform these functions until the retirement age permitted by law. So if along the way you want the, pers you want the person to seize the exercise of such functions, then in the appropriate case, you must again execute a document, give to him personally, stating the reason why you have suspended him or you are asking him to seize the performance of those functions. 
-hmm. And that is very important. So that's why I've said elsewhere that <laughs> that notice we got from the Judicial Secretary, I don't think that is what, that is enough notice to the judges named here that they are suspended. Mm -hmm. They would have to, if they are not giving those documents, in my own limited knowledge of the law, which is relative, they will have to then write to the, the well, now we are told the vice president or the presidency to furnish them with copies of that document that was executed by the president, informing them to suspend the performance of those functions. And it's, it's very important. What, what, if, what if they are vindicated in the trial? They are vindicated. Yeah. Well, the Constitution further states that the president may at any time revoke a suspension under this article. So tomorrow, for example, Mr. Misata, Vice President, has suspended them. Mm -hmm. And I'll come to just something briefly on that. Mm -hmm. Then the President then subsequently thinks that no useful purpose will be served by their suspension. He can at any time revoke it. Just reinstate them? Yes, reinstate them. While the, so the um, investigations are going on, that is the discretion that is granted the president. Of course, mm -hmm. under the laws, discretions are to be exercised judicially mm -hmm. and not capriciously, and so on. So that is very important. But then, just a quick one on that. Yes. I was, um, I think, I was a bit surprised, with all due respect, to read from the statement that was issued by the judicial secretary that. Mr. Emisata, Vice President, in his capacity as the President of the Republic of Ghana. We are all aware of Asari and the Republic when he challenged the constitutionality of the performance of the functions or the swearing in or the taking of the oath mm -hmm. of the President. That is, there's an aspect pending. But even that, I do not believe that. As we sit here, we can really say that Mr. Emisata is the president of the Republic of Ghana. Functions of the executive mm. or the president vary. There are some that the president can perform here, and there are some that he can only perform whilst outside of Ghana. So what's in the UN? He is performing those functions of the executive under Article 73, 74, and 76, international relations. So if Zemizata is the president, who is <laughs> Mr. Mahama? Mr. Mahama. Or what is he doing mm -hmm. right now? What is with Holland? So should be in his capacity as the vice president. No, at least performing the functions of the president <laughs> now. But it doesn't make him the president of the Republic of Ghana. Well, mm -hmm. that is my understanding, which well. I admit is relative, relatively challenged, if you like. According. So, but then going back here, let's take that. I mean, that has been done. Mm -hmm. I was giving you the example of Madame Loretta Lamte. An instance where a petition can be rejected upon the, um, upon the failure or inability of the uh, Chief Justice to establish a prima facie case. Mm -hmm. You know, there were two petitions that were filed against Madame Loretta, the Shrike Boss. Yeah. One was just thrown out because, in the wisdom of the Chief Justice, no useful purpose will be served by establishing the committee and calling on the, the the strike boss to answer any question. Mm -hmm. It was the second one which the Chief Justice decided that there was a prima facie case. And in that instance as well, the executive quickly exercised the powers under Article 1469, I mean 10, and then also asked her to be suspended mm -hmm. or suspended her. So that is a clear example of, so it is not every instance where there will be establishment of prima facie mm -hmm. case. The mm -hmm. Chief Justice if she thinks, or he thinks, as the case may be, that no useful purpose will be served, then they, they will just inform the person that this is a frivolous matter. Maybe you are a busybody or whatever reason that the law may permit. So that is what we are now with the Superior Court judges. It can be laborious and too expansive for comfort. Mm. But I have said that this is what the people of Ghana, in whom sovereignty is vested, have provided. No one else has the right to circumvent it. But at any point in time, we think that this is not what we intended and that this is too laborious or too expansive. They have the right to also amend it uh, to, to conform to what their expectations may be, maybe because of lapse of time. Mm -hmm. 
Well, well everybody was expecting that, uh, well, with what has happened, the layman on the street would think all the judges would have been lumped in one basket, you know, charged with the same crime or mm. charged with the same mm. trial. Mm. But here we are, we have Derry, uh, Justice Derry and Justice Mustafa, who says, no, logo, yeah. yeah, there's logo, uh, who says, well, they're suing the CJ, they're suing Tiger Eye and uh, the Attorney General. Seven of them have decided they will go through regular trial. Uh, one has pleaded ill health and mm. two have retired. I'll start with the retired ones. So what, they, they can be within this uh, one four, Article 146 okay. business. Obviously, 146 is about removal of superior court justices. And they have and already been removed. The person so. has ceased to be a superior <laughs> court judge. judge. So we are going to remove him from where to where. <laughs> He's already removed by, by, I think, one of them. Mm -hmm. I really even had a similar issue. And just before he was to be removed, he, his retirement age, um, he, he attained a retirement age. age. So there was an earlier one before the second one. So, so they would have to go through just an ordinary criminal trial or civil trial? Well, whether well, that will happen or not, that is the, the decision that we as a people have exclusively assigned to the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. Whether you will be prosecuted for any stated offense or alleged offense, that is the sole prerogative of the Attorney General. It's a discretion that she must also exercise judicially. Mm -hmm. And if the Attorney General thinks that no useful purpose will be served again, or that the, the, the law, as she understands it now, mm -hmm. does not even warrant such a move, that is the end of it, as I understand it. It will be very difficult for a person to even go to court for Madame to compel the Attorney General to exercise that discretion. It's not impossible, but I would be surprised, because there have been instances where the court has said such such exercise of discretion is better left to that person because even if you compare her to start along the way there's something you call only prosecute that the state is no more interested in prosecuting the person mm -hmm. and that one can also seize further prosecution so whether they will be prosecuted should, should, or not should you give a reason why or you can just decide i don't want to prosecute again should you give a reason the no? attorney general yeah, do you, could you hear it? Because of A, B, C, D, um, opting for nolly prosecutor or... Oh, well, people. the practice is that um, they do not usually give, mm -hmm. but some are now arguing that because of the provisions on the, the condition precedent for the exercise of discretion, mm -hmm. you must at least state the reasons, and the reasons must be reasons that are not capricious. Mm -hmm. But it has, I don't think it has been tested to my knowledge, mm -hmm. because if we also, um, if we restrict, restrict the exercise of such discretion or initiative, it is also going to restrict the Attorney General in the performance of the constitutional functions that we have assigned to her, as the case is. So then we are left with uh, the one, one okay, is going to health. And, and so yeah, so, so we have two, seven who are going through, you know, responding to the uh, Chief Justice's petition, mm -hmm. and then two who are suing the Chief Justice and everything. I mean, uh, in, 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 in legal terms, I mean, has, has the seven making a smarter move or is the two making a smarter move? Well, you see, rights are guaranteed mm -hmm. under the Constitution for all of us. In fact, it even means that most of the rights are inalienable. We had them before the Constitution only guaranteed it. Mm -hmm. It's like going for a loan and another person guaranteed his payment. <laughs> You all right? Mm -hmm. The loan is yeah. granted you. Yes. So, but it depends on you as the individual. That when you see that another person, the constitution does not even only state that you can challenge abuse or um, that uh, abuse or that the person is in the process of abusing. But even imminent expectation that your right can be abused. If you have an expectation that if you don't stop this person, he's likely to abuse your right, you can still go to court to restrain, to even prevent him from taking the move from in the think, first place. From thinking about it. <laughs> from taking the move, of course, yeah, as they say, even the devil does not know the intent of man. That's the only power that he wasn't given. So you may not even know, but once you know that he has commenced certain steps mm -hmm. and may lead to a breach of your own rights or freedom, then you will have to take steps to prevent 
it from from getting into the stage where to even breach your rights. So, so they, as individuals, mm -hmm. seven may think that, in our own view, probably we would like to go through the process. Let's not forget that this committee is only an administrative committee. It is not a court. Judicial power, final judicial power, is vested in the judiciary. Okay. And so, if they, they may decide to go through all the process, at the end of the day, you can decide to go to the court for the court to crush everything that has been done. Others may think that we will not even want us to get to the stage where the right may have been breached in the first place. We are going to even block it. And fortunately, or unfortunately, this is the law that the people of Ghana have provided, that in the case of non-judges, if there's an allegation of bribery, Please quickly inform the police, you know, and then they will depend on the attorney general's advice generally, and bring the matter before a court of competent jurisdiction for a criminal trial. In the case of judges, because of our past experience, which I narrated, this is the procedure we have prescribed as to whether or not, whilst this procedure under 146 and so on mm -hmm. is going on. The attorney general can also commence a criminal action. Until she does so, I would say that she doesn't think that that is possible. Wow. Wow. Now, uh, if uh, Justice Derry and uh, Justice Logo, if they, if, if they successfully sue, then it means... Well, they have sued. So if they, I mean, if if they, they are successful. If they are successful. Sorry. Yeah, uh -huh. if they are successful, then that's the end. It means they have indicated. I mean, well, it depends on the reliefs. They have um, brought before a particular court. For example, at the Supreme Court, um, Derry, from what I've seen, a few of the processes is filed. He's saying that, I mean, first of all, the law provides that hearing of complaints or petition about maybe misbehavior, incompetence, and inability to perform and so on about a judge of the Superior Court must be in camera. Mm. And that's not only must be the proceedings be in camera, but any document, any process that will help or assist the, the committee mm -hmm. in coming to a decision this way or that way must also be in camera, mm -hmm. must not be disclosed, as it were. So the disclosure of the supporting evidence filed by Tiger um, PI Limited amounts to a breach or an infringement on their right and also non-compliance with law established or affirmed by the Supreme Court itself in so, an earlier case. So is, 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 uh, is Derry right in saying that, look, Anas is the most lawless person and you know, the state is giving him extra leeway because of the sensitive nature of the information he's bringing. We are giving him a bit leeway than no normal because he's right. I mean, if everything that you have to use against me should, you know, should be in camera, this is being broadcast and advertised and Facebook and Twitter and WhatsApp. Hmm. Well, the interesting thing is that it is only the Supreme Court that can depart from their own decisions hmm. <laughs> as far as the courts are concerned. Hmm. And the decisions of the Supreme Court, when the facts are the same and the law relating to it are also the same, then lower courts, Court of Appeal, <coughs> High Court, Circuit, Magistrates or District, will have to comply with it. But they alone can depart from their decision. So in this one, the Attorney General may also file, or the parties may also file their decisions. Because otherwise, it is, it is is depending or relying on an earlier Supreme Court case in the J. Chum, mm -hmm. as uh, Attorney General Brian mm -hmm. Takwete, where the court clearly stated that. But nothing prevents the court from departing from that decision. It will, it will be a very interesting scenario to see whether the court will feel bound by that earlier decision mm -hmm. or, for some reason, will depart from it. It is... It is for me, in all these unfolding events, what we lawyers, or at least I am interested in, is the precedents that have been established. Mm -hmm. And these precedents bind, as I say, lower courts, and also lawyers. Once 
you can place the facts and the law within the very facts and the law which form the core. Mm -hmm. They say ratio, decide, then D, and things like that. But which form the core of that Supreme Court decision? Once you fall into it, then they will just wave it at you unless you are able, that is where your dexterity as a lawyer comes in, you are able to convince them that, yes, I concede this is the law, but I think that in the circumstances, it is imminent that you should change or depart from that earlier decision. The, the danger here is that the people who are going to pronounce this judgment, this is a law to protect them. If they move the goalpost today that, oh, yes, for this instance, you know, forget about it. Any evidence you want, show it in camera. Uh, in the next six months' time, uh, it may be something about them. Now, like everybody has to have their day in court to be innocent or guilty. Yes. So I find something about Justice Yaopo. In my opinion, it's, it's wrong. So I blast it out. Mm. You know, denigrate your name only to come to court to realize that, oh, no, th that wasn't the case. Mm. But I did that because, well, previously you said it's allowed. I mean, so think, coming to think about this, yet still the, you know, the issue facing us is very, very sensitive. What do you do that? Do you say, yes, look, although you've shown it, mm. let's go, or do I change this principle knowing that in six months' time it could be? Well, I think I've said it here before on another program here, mm. that, and I really subscribe to that principle that judges do not determine cases based on an assumed sensitivity, emotions of the public, mm. or even the nature of the person appearing before them. Mm. If you are a judge and you do so, then you would have violated not only the oath you have taken to determine or administer justice without fear, favor, ill will, or affection, but you would have actually also um, bruised your own conscience where we believe God exists or resides. So you, you don't take in, into consideration so-called sensitivity or even the national interest of the case to override what exactly you understand the law to be. Let, if, let, let, me, mm -hmm. let me argue a bit. I mean, ju judiciary is very sacred. Very, very sacred. Henceforth, even if you find them doing something wrong, you keep whatever it is wrong back door so that nobody even knows what they did wrong. Who will keep? Well, I mean, if, 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 uh, if I found, let's say, a judge mm. collecting bribe, mm. I'm not supposed to come and tell the public that the judge is collecting bribe because that's what I'm going to use to petition him to mm -hmm. be removed. Mm -hmm. I have to keep it quiet mm -hmm. so that the, probably the public does, don't lose faith in the institution. Now, if we are going to set a new precedence to say, look, anybody you suspect doing something wrong, you can bring it out and then send your petition. I mean, I'm sure the next minute there will be videos and letters and everything in the yeah. newspapers. And I mean, the whole judicial system will be a yeah, This is wonderful. That's what I call native wisdom. And I'm not surprised you are <laughs> expressing it because of where you're coming. I mean, it's very important. You understand? That's if you lose uh, the background, the essence of the background mm -hmm. to this whole thing, then we will think that, oh, I mean, why are judges being treated differently? Mm -hmm. I'm saying that if we think that that is not appropriate, let's change the law. It's the people of Ghana who have put it there mm -hmm. so that it is very important. And the essence is that let us first of all protect the judiciary. It is, it is a very important organ of state for us. But that doesn't mean that, look, almost as before this announced thing came, mm -hmm. and, and it was confirmed at our conference, some judges were standing, were, I mean, appearing before committees to answer charges of complaint of, but, uh, of, but we didn't of know about it. We didn't know about mm -hmm. it. I mean, quite a number of lawyers have defended judges at various committees anyway. Some have been dismissed or removed. Others have been cautioned in accordance with law. And others have been exonerated. It happens. But if we are then going to de decide now that be because if a judge is alleged to have committed an offense or misbehavior, we're just going to go out to the public and then later on proceed to comply with the law. Then, well, it will come to a time that any judgment that goes against any person is going to be the subject 
of an allegation. Let me bring uh, Professor Michael Quay in, also another legal luminary, once upon a time, Deputy Speaker of the House, so he knows the law. Uh, Prof, you're welcome. Hello, thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, I am, uh, you know, trying to play a lawyer here and think, <laughs> thinking ahead of time, but I'll, I'll bring you in exactly where I am. Uh, there are seven of the justices who are just responding to the Chief Justice petition and two who are suing uh, the, uh, the system. They're suing the Chief Justice, they're suing Tiger Eye, and they're suing the Attorney General. They are saying that, you know, everything that you want to use against us should be held in camera, but you've exposed it, and therefore I'm going to sue you. Now, I'm saying that if this thing gets to the Supreme Court, the dilemma the Supreme Court judges face is that, do we set a new precedence where anybody who suspects a judge of any ill doing can bring the suspicion out in public and then petition? Or should they say, look, that's the law and you cannot do that? I mean, where do they stand? And considering the sensitive nature of this, because they need to do something for us to build hope back into the judiciary. The overall nature of the case, the total circumstances of the case, mm. where the information is coming from, the purpose for letting the information come to the public rest, all these things were factored in. Mm -hmm. And let me just remind you, a number of cases upon which... Oh. Did I drop the call? Oh, just as he was building... Just as he was building his case, I wanted to hear where, mm. you know, where, where he would come from from there. But after all is said and done, right, let me come to the, the five members then take their report and recommendation. Yes. And then they give it to the chief justice. The chief justice, yes, and then she will forward it to the president. And mm. the president is bound by the recommendations contained in the report of the investigative uh, committee. And in my understanding, the president cannot vary any recommendation. So all these so things... So if they recommend that, you know, remove this person, reinstate this person? Yeah, you just... have no option. So, you see, that is why I say that we have carefully insulated charges from arbitrary removal. So mm. not even one single person, as far as superior court judges are concerned, can remove a judge. And as you have seen, the Chief Justice plays a role, Judicial Council plays a role, the... Uh, the, um, the president plays a role, and even the Council of State plays a role, so that in the minds of the people, having gone through all this, and at the end of the day, the courts are also there, waiting to probably hear applications on issues of abuse of the processes, um, the I'm, rules I'm, of I'm, natural I'm, justice. After the committee, do, I, do, do, do the justice still have a choice? No, no, no. I wasn't happy with the way the, just, the committee did. I'm going to go to a court or something? Or? Yes, in my understanding, it is an administrative body. <laughs> and every administrative body, once the law, once they exercise or they do what judges do by pronouncing on the rights of people, then they are subject to what we call the supervisory jurisdiction of the court. And they can go there. An example is um, the so-called Muntaka case where President Atamnos, may he so rest in peace, ordered the uh, committee to be established by the um, national security and then subsequently ordered the head of civil service to dismiss the two persons, the whistleblowers, who had rather alleged that a minister had engaged in some officers. They went to the high court, two different high court judges sitting separately, ruled that the president was wrong and the, 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 <coughs> the decision was set aside. Let me go back to the phone. I think we have Professor Michael Quay now. Prof, so you're just uh, building a case when we lose the connection. Yes. Um, yeah. Go back to the question. Well, yeah. my, my, my question was that uh, at the moment, the, the law says that if you want to remove any high court justice, whatever evidence you have in all the trial has to be held in camera. That's the law. The, the, there's a mass scandal involving the judiciary. And so when it goes to the high courts now, they need to make a decision to look, do we stick to our old guns to say, look, because... Thank you very much. You mean okay. the Supreme Court? Yeah. Yeah. Supreme Court. yeah. You realize that in all two public profile cases, the mere actor 
something has happened. It's normally, in this modest age, a matter of public knowledge. Mm -hmm. You get my point? Yeah. Facts are known. They publish them every newspaper. They say, by way of a reportage, the mere presentation that a woman was raped, according to the police docket, this is the manner in which it happened, and all the details you are entitled to publish, even for the courtroom. Only you don't make your own comment as to what should be the outcome and matters relating to that. Therefore, as for mere presentation of facts, those who are embarrassed by them should be very careful as to the way they want that these things should not be told. What kind of case have you heard of before? And all the details, that's what they call spongy details. I'm, I'm, I'm not in the public realm. As a mere fact of the reportage. Prof, but, but they, they may not be of the judiciary or of judges, because these, these, these are uh, specially and, protected. And, and, and this is where the problem is lying. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where the problem lies. Why, why should it, why should it be cost, happen to customs officers, but not to judges? This is where the problem lies. And let me give you a local classical, a typical example. <laughs> Normally, these things don't happen. And that's why people are making a meal of that which is, is most irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And they will lose when you go to the Supreme Court. Because if you look at the precedent, Do so I still have? It was the same thing. And these facts were methods of public knowledge. We have reached the computer age, mm -hmm. the age of information technology, the age where our constitution mandates the media to become watchdogs against corruption and abuse of power. The watchdogs can report. The, the watchdogs, the intention of it is just that they should keep quiet about them. So we have got one page where those people who engage in corrupt practices must know whether they are judges, whether they are whatever public officers, if and whether they are presidents, that the mere reporting of mere facts cannot be judged. In the general case, and the United States is a repository of human rights. It was held clear that even though the evidence was obtained by subterfuges, by tapes, and recording devices that were put in Genghis chambers, so on and so forth, yeah. the media could talk about that. And that those who are going to also judge are professionals who weigh the pros and the cons and come to an adjudication. Nobody could stop the media in the United States of America with regard to that operation Greylock. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Now, when there is a prima facie case, this is a matter for appropriate determination. Once it is determined, then the steps are taken like the suspensions that have come by and so on and so forth until the full adjudication. So people must, I believe, get it very clear in their minds that there cannot be any judges, especially the media. They also have a constitutional right as watch dogs. And when the dog has watched, the dog must report. We know they report. So in fact, this matter also relates to the freedom of the press the, the media stress, the media right, at the strength in the Constitution. Why did we learn this from? We learned this from America. And any attempt to guard the media itself will also become under issue altogether. They will mm -hmm. take the matter to court. And I believe the court will hold that you cannot guard the media. For a long time, we've been talking about perception, perception of corruption. 
How can you establish that fact? You know this, the judge who takes will go and report. The person who gives a court that that will not go and report. So how can we ever know? Hmm. And the chief justice has been persistently talking about the perception of corruption. We remember Dr. Atuguba from three years or two ago, this very serious statement in that regard. Now we have got the fact. And then or, or what appears to be the fact. They will say this cannot be for public comment and consumption. If public facts alone are published, you cannot stop it. So the important thing is when appropriate people have analyzed this, will it lead to an offense? A judge by their own code of conduct cannot discuss any matter before him or her with any third person, particular members of the public. So by that standard, they will ask you, did you discuss or not? <laughs> and is that in breach of our rule and regulation or not? And so on and so forth. Whether that discussion is not a breach, will be a determination with regard to the plan of our city. Prof, I want to thank you very much, and I'm sure that we'll come back to you sometime. Uh, this case hasn't gone away yet, but thank you. I thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to take a break here, and then when I come back, I'll come back to the studio with regards to the public reporting. Now, uh, it wasn't even leaked, it was given to us. It was advertised, there were tickets given, uh, you know, this was shown. Uh, so it wasn't a matter of gagging anybody or we, 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 we filed a report somewhere and we're gagging. How does this play out? Stay tuned, I'm coming back. Well, thank you very much for staying and uh, this judicial brouhaha, but I say judicial confusion. This is part three. And I know a different twist will come, and by all means, I'm sure we'll call upon Lawyer Paul to come and educate us. But we have now, we now know the procedure, how, what, you know, and where we have got into now, and what the defense is now, but I wish we had more time. And, uh, well, so what then happens to, because now we've lost 10 high court judges, and I think about 12, uh, yeah. you know, lower courts. Uh, yeah, I think it's about 22. 12 from the High Court. 12 from the High Court and 22. And then, yeah. so, so then what happens to that court? Because now you're going to resume. Okay, before I go on to that, I give credit to something. Mm. I think that, and rightly so, most of us avoided doing much to do law because <laughs> of calculation <laughs> issue. I think when I was um, making the references to the number of years the person mm -hmm. must be, I mean, for the High Court judge, must be 10 mm -hmm. years. Court of Appeal 12 and the Supreme Court 15 years. Okay. And I give that credit to Samson for okay. reminding me. Mm. Yes. Okay. He jammed up. Now, okay. so the, the point is, yes, you're right. In fact, before, you know, we went for vacation. And then we were, mm. there was a list that was brought out because for the High Court, for example, we are all moving to the new building opposite the Customs Head Office. Mm -hmm. And so a list came where cases have, or the judges have been, if you like, distributed, mm -hmm. so to speak, to all the courtrooms. Now, for the high court, the seven who have been suspended cannot perform their functions. The two logo and dairy technically can perform their functions. They can sit as judges. Mm -hmm. As to whether they will do so is another matter. Mm -hmm. Then, um, Justice Christ, we understand because of ill health, but if it's temporary, and he's cleared until he's, there is a ground for his suspension, mm -hmm. he can also perform. As for the, circuit, the lower court justices, the judges, mm -hmm. we understand that they have been suspended now. So if each of them was occupying one court, which is usually the case, it means that about 24 of those courts scattered all over will be without judges. What we mean is that immediately some judges will have to be appointed there or that their cases will have to be distributed among those other judges mm -hmm. in the region. So if you are, you are in WA, for example, 
and a circuit court judge in Wa, you are in the High Court, and the circuit court judge in Wa has been suspended, and the High Court judge may be asked to be an additional circuit court judge mm. to also go and sit on. So already they are overburdened, yeah. especially in the rural areas where they still do um, manual recordings. It is a very laborious work to do. And so I will pray that more lawyers will be interested in uh, more going to the bench because um, otherwise it is really going to put a lot of pressure on the existing judges. I mean, to, look, to um, lose or maybe to have such a number suspended and not to perform their functions is very huge indeed. Mm -hmm. And it is important that immediately remedial measures are adopted so that there won't be any break or any barrier because people are still complaining about delays at the courts. Mm. If if, this if, is, even, at, even at full steam. Even, yes, even <laughs> at full steam. So we, we just hope that it, those who are, and also we the lawyers, will, will also speed up. We will adopt the remedial measures that have been um, initiated so that swiftly cases can be determined and then people will get justice. Lawyer Yahopon, once again, thank you very much for the education. And I'm sure by now we have to see us. Next time anything comes, at least we know where we are and then we can just move on. But being an education, I've kind of understand it now. Tomorrow we're back to do this all over again. But let me say thank you to Tantees who sews my shirts for the show. And you can get Tantees on 024362001. Thanks to Azalu. Thanks to uh, Aisha Ibrahim. Malik Dabu for doing the production and be good tomorrow we we'll see you thank you very much well, thank you thank you boss.